Hey everyone, this is James from Blizzard Lighting, and this is the Eclipse DMX 101 video series, video number 6. Uh, in this video, we are going to cover how to manually, step-by-step, uh, -step record your own sequences without having to use any, uh, you know, moving effects generator or RGB effects generator. But, you know, I don't see why you wouldn't want to. They're very simple and easy. But, some people like to do it the hard way. I'm one of them. Let's check it out. So, if you select your fixtures that you want to create a sequence for, at least our NIT, that puts everything down uh, center if you have moving heads or scanners, and opens up the shutter and opens up the dimmer. So, say we basically you know, wanted to create a, a two-step sequence where the moving heads go from, you know, like facing upwards to downwards. So we can, you know, literally select your fixtures, adjust your pan or tilt setting or whatever. Say we wanted it to switch colors, too. Red tilt at nine. So that's one step. Uh, you know, let's change the color. Go back up even more. And that's step two. You know, and these are going to fade back and forth. But you'll notice that, um, you know, maybe you don't want it to fade that long, or you, you don't want it to just continuously go up and down, you want it to stop, you know, goes down, holds for two seconds, fades back up for three seconds, holds us there for like ten, you know, you can time it out exactly how you might want it to, by, you know, click pause, you know, step one, or choose the step that you want to edit. Just simply click fade up, say two, which is two seconds. You can manually change the fade down to be maybe three seconds. Uh, delay going up, 0.5. Delay down, you know, maybe zero. So you can skip it. Whole time could be, say, three seconds. Step one, and you can hit enter. Now, step two fade up, we'll do one, keep fade down one, no delay, whole time for five seconds. Hit enter. We've now just created or modified our own fade up, fade down, delay, whole time for those two steps. So, play it back. So you fade up, and there's a delay. It's holding for five seconds. Now, hold time for three. There's a delay. It's fading up. Let's see, hold time five. Fade down. Hold time three. Delay up, fade down, fade up. So, you know, you really just create as many steps as you want per scene and save it as a button. So, it's a way for you to really, you know, get complete control over your stuff, um, over your shows, your sequences. You know, you could even, you know, step out your own circle if you wanted it to do around a certain. Uh, radius of an object or, or people or area, you know, just simply plot out your your points and program yeah, as many points as you want to make it smooth, and then adjust your your fade times manually without having to, having to try to you know select a circle, modify the steps, modify the area, stuff like that. You know, some people. You know, the more time you put into your show, the, the much more better it'll look. Uh, that I can promise you. Um, 
So, I mean, that's really how you can create steps. You can even you know, we'll pause it, go back to faders. Um, say we wanted to add a step where it changes colors. Uh, say we want it to be yellow or blue or whatever. That's step three now. But we don't really we don't need that one to fade. So we'll do zero. We'll have it hold for two seconds. And then it'll continue on. So it starts at step one. It's moving. Blue. Oh, now it's blue. Step three is also blue. So you can see I messed that up. If I messed it up purposely, you'll never know. <laughs> so, go back, edit that, make that green again, go to step three, now that's back to blue, hit play, now it's, now it's gonna go back to one, play the sequence, step two, step three, hold, back to one, there you go super easy to do, super easy to edit. Um, I mean, you could even you know, adjust the, the, the speed of it live on the fly if you wanted. Uh, there's a playback, fade time, fade speed, dimmer. So, you know, you turn off your dimmers as you're doing stuff. Again, really easy. So we can now save this. Get your, if, depending on what channels you want used, you can definitely do default. You know, if you didn't really want to, you know, decide, well, I don't really want to save those color sequences. You could do pan and tilt only, and it's just going to save the up and down sequences, and then allow you to use other buttons to override the color and gobo, and so on and so forth. So call it ice. Save sequence. Now I have a nice button. And if it, you know, say you, uh, you know, your button page is getting kind of cluttered, you can do add a new page. Call it, we'll move everything that has uh, says ice to it. Do that. So we can take this one. Move it to ice. Copy such a button. It's ice. There. There you go. It's easy to do. You might even be able to drag and drop it, but I'm not sure. Nope. So, there you go. And then you can move it back. Or you can even leave stuff on that page as a copy. So, let's touch the copy button. Put it back here to page one. Okay. No. So now we got this. And we got this, so we have two of them. And if what's cool is you can even see that this is green on the perimeter. Suddenly you know that you have something on, on that page. So if you shut it off, go to this page, no more green perimeter. Means you don't have anything playing back on that page at the time. So, oh, another handy thing here is Master Blackout. Right there. Just click it. Might even be yeah, yeah the delete key, D E L, delete key on the keyboard. So what activates that? And shuts it off. Uh, you can right click, um, readjust fade in, fade out times. Pretty much live on the fly. Right click again to edit the button sequence. Uh, assign and delete a keyboard shortcut. 
which is latching or a bump button. So uh, let's do B. We'll do latch, bump, save it. So since I did bump, so as long as I hold down the B key on my keyboard, that scene's gonna be on. As soon as I go the button, it goes off. So if we want to do latch, save, press it once, it goes on. Press it again, it goes off. Very easy to do. So uh, we can just delete it and it's gone. Same thing with MIDI notes. If you had a USB MIDI device hooked up, you could do that. You can rename it, delete it, or just instantly do bump button. So if you assign it as a bump, as soon as you hold your your click on it or whatever, as long as you if you have a touch screen monitor, if your fingers push down, it's gonna play that. As long as it is being clicked on by the mouse or your pointer or whatever. So, uncheck bump button, boom, there you go. That's on, that's off. So, alright, well I took this, uh, this series of videos covers a, uh, more than enough to get anybody started on the program. I hope everybody at least uh, took a little bit you know, took something away from this uh, video series. Um, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post a comment on this video. Or shoot us an email at support at And, you know, who we will do our absolute best to help you out with any questions that you may have. Uh, anytime. Just let us know. We're always here to help out. So, thanks everybody. Take it easy. If you have any questions, let us know. Bye-bye.